Welcome to E3. All right, so you're welcome to today's service. Um, we're still on a series of character development. Um, I'll we'll continue for as long as Reverend wants us to continue. And I also want to thank our senior pastor, Reverend Kenneth, sorry, Kenneth, oh, Barry Siabo, um, for his um, gracious, I need you to clap, please. <laughs> Let's celebrate our senior pastor. And our first lady, too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because, right, you know, beside every strong and successful man, there's a strong and successful woman. That's real. I know this will be the loudest. I know. And Doris. I know my people. <laughs> they will be the loudest. But I agree with you. I concur. Beside every successful man, there's a successful woman. Matter of fact, in every successful man is a successful woman. Right. Hallelujah. So we'll continue our character development series. Today, um, on Wednesday, sorry, those of you who were in service on Wednesday, um, we shared on the oracle, talking about your tongue being a principal navigator for your trajectory in life. How crucial, quintessential your tongue is, your verbalizations, not just your vocalizations, but your expressions of your thought, whether verbally or in written form or nowadays on Facebook, all social media platforms, your status update, whatever you communicate to the outside world can influence your trajectory in life, can and will influence your trajectory in life. Especially today, many of the things we see in scriptures are becoming more real today because the internet never forgets. So there's a rehearsal, there's a rehashing of all the things many persons said previously and as they've been Declared publicly, they're made to look like hypocrites. They may not have been hypocritical when they made those statements, but it also shows that many times people speak not out of conviction, but out of public persuasion. And the head mentality, this is what everybody's saying, this was in vogue. And we talked about that and why discretion. I think Reverend used that word when we were summarizing, and that for me summarizes the entire message discretion. The Bible says, let your moderation, let your boundaries both in conduct and in speech, be known to every person. It was Paul who told Timothy, his protege. He was talking about Paul's, Paul, being, Paul was talking about Timothy being an exemplar to the church, not to the world. Paul had told Timothy, when he was outlining the CV for whoever would be an overseer, that that person must have a testimony amongst them who are without. So it's important to have a testimony as a Christian amongst unbelievers. But Paul didn't stop there. He told Timothy, be that an example in word and deed to the believers. So even within church, you need to model good behavior. So we expect it to model good behavior to the outside community, but even within church. Matter of fact, nowadays, you can't tell whether church and community are different, you know, because what is church? Is it people who are gathered in a place? But Paul says even within the context of believers, we should model appropriate behavior in word and in deed, in speech and in behavior, in conduct and in all our expressions. So your status updates, you know, Status updates, you know, your status updates. I was speaking to somebody, your status updates. <laughs> Bible says, let your communication minister grace to hear us. Of course, you can be free to express yourself, but make sure that what you're saying, your sure reflects your values. Hallelujah. So today we'll be taking it a notch further. I'll be talking on, for want or lack of a caption, I'll be speaking on immortal combat. All right, there. Yeah, I got it there. Immortal comeback. As a sub theme, I've titled it, looking for what to title it, The Paradox of Free Will. So, immortal comeback. All of them. I don't say all of them. It was hard. <laughs> okay. Option A, immortal comeback. <laughs> Option B, The Paradox of Free Will. But it's a sub theme. You get what I'm saying as we go on. The Paradox of Free Will. Now, all through humanity, what we see expressed Daily, in terms of people's lives, their expressions, their attitudinal dispositions to life, is a reflection of an inner conflict that exists for every person. <coughs> Excuse me. Every person. A context between two forces that as long as you're human will define your stay in this world. For want of a better expression, we dichotomize it to say the context between good and evil. When God planted Adam in the garden, it was one of the earliest concepts to introduce him to. 
the concept of morality, right or wrong. And that tree, <laughs> let me ruffle some feathers. That tree in the garden was not apple. Hmm. You know, when we're in children's church, we're told that it is an apple that Adam ate. And many people to believe it. As a matter of fact, we're also told that when God called Adam, the apple got stuck in his throat. And that's why men have Adam's apple. <laughs> you know, it's so popular, that philosophy. And that's why even in medical science, we still call this Adam's apple. This larynx. That's why it's a voice box. But we call it Adam's apple. Because this is where the apple got stuck when God called Adam. We were, we were swallowing it. So men did not fully swallow it. It was women <laughs> who fully swallowed their own. That's why they are sl smartly, slightly wiser. <laughs> anyway, that's just the teaching. It's so pervasive that even in today's world, many people use an iPhone. Now, what's the icon for an iPhone? For the, uh, iPhone, what's the icon? The Apple company is a half-eaten apple, right? Yes, that's still the belief that Adam beat out of the apple. So the apple has become symbolic, metaphorically, of those who tested wisdom. For the Greek, of course, um, they see man's access to wisdom via a portal called Prometheus. Prometheus was the one who stole fire from the gods, from the Greek mythology, and gave it to man, and that sparked up civilization. So Greeks tend Promethean, but the rest of us, we believe in Adam's apple. All right, okay. But the reality is that it was an apple. Matter of fact, it didn't matter. What it was actually was emblematic of something deeper. That tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or better put, the tree of morality, or the tree that determined what was right or wrong, was emblematic of God's sovereign authority to determine for man what was right and what was wrong. The tree was just metaphorical, was emblematic. So the moment you eat of this tree, you are declaring before the cosmic realm that you, Adam, the progenitor of mankind, will be responsible for you, what is right or wrong for yourself. So henceforth, if I determine that I want to go nude, it is right. Whatever I determine, my morality becomes relative to me. It's based on my persuasion. So now you have to say, this is my truth. That's the conceptual framework. I will determine. I don't chop apple. I will determine that I will determine for myself what is right or wrong. So God told him the consequence of that decision is beyond just mutiny. There's a consequence. It's beyond just rebellion. There is a consequence. The moment a product tells the manufacturer, henceforth, I will determine my specifications, you've indicated they're going to withdraw from the market, right? So if my father tells you that this 32-inch um, television, when you get home, it's LED, it has all the specs. When you, when you put it on, it's going to show 32 inches. When you get home, it's showing 28 inches. There's a warranty period. You return it. The moment that product begins to manifest characteristics that are inconsistent, contravire with what was its original conceptual framework, that product has ceased to exist. So the day that that eaten of the tree, the day that that determines for yourself that you will be responsible for your own morality, you have ceased to have the right to exist. You will be exchanged. Now, many, many other dimensions, I don't go to all the scriptural extrapolations, but this was core. Morality, the moral compass for man, will always be the context between what is right and what is wrong. And since Adam fell, all of us have to deal with that. All of us. We have to deal constantly with this context between what is right and what is wrong. And only until you resolve yourself, and that's why we have these teachings in church, that the scripture will become your internal reference for truth. These struggles will become more difficult as the day goes by. Because in the world we're living, the distinctions between right and wrong are being blurred daily. Are being blurred. I had a long back and forth chat with a, a sister. Um, well, I don't know if I can call her a sister anymore, because I used to know her as a sister. But nowadays, you know, they don't finish, you know? Because I see a man of things. I just saw one on a status update. I, 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 didn't use, I didn't know status updates really existed. My wife knows those things. I'm not, I'm totally tech savvy, but man, this world was too hard. So I just like living in my own space. But when I got an iPhone, I could not receive network signals in my area. I keep saying it. You can be in church and not be hearing words. The problem is not the message. The problem is you. So I was in my hood, and my hood, I thought the signal strength was so poor until I got an iPhone. I now have 4G. So the problem was not the network. <laughs> It was my phone. <laughs> it was my phone. You know, so now I can get people's status update. And I saw something there. They said, if I see $100 million on the floor, they said, oh, the question was a pose. I'm sure some of you have said it. It's gone viral. If you find $100 million on the floor, what would you do? Something like that. And um, so on, so after giving church 10%, it's, 
is the $90 million we're talking about. You know, and people feel that by giving church 10%, <laughs> We'll set it God, you know, so <laughs> it's now what we're we going to do with the rest. So somebody said, if we find 10 million naira, both of us find 10 million naira, that's another question, find 10 million naira, what we would we do? I said, it's what you would do your share you're talking about. Me, I know what I'll do with my share. You know, so it stands to reason that many persons assume that there is no way you find $100 million on the floor and the police or whatever ever comes in. Everybody justifies it by, they will steal it again. They'll do that again, they'll do that again. I said, that's not important to me. The first question is, over where Noah? Is it yours? That's the only thing that matters. Every other thing we're talking about is just mere excuses. But that made sense in my parents' time. It doesn't make sense in my generation. And probably will not make sense in the next generation. It would not make sense in the next generation. In fact, you would consider a fool. Say, hey, that guy. Like, no, not even you. Your children, our grandchildren, will be explaining to their parents. I said, that's how we started going down. They did my father return money to the police. That's from then to now. That's how we got to this trouble. The father was a fool. The father was a fool. He said, return money to the police. Oh, he was really a big fool. But in my parents' time, that would have been considered. It's something, it's something you can say. From people will tell that house, that's the guy that returned money. The house of honest people. That's where you should marry into. You should marry into that family. But I was saying, that family, fools. <laughs> if you marry there, you're, you're there. <laughs> Or there, people that return money to police, or there. I tell people that it's because of how far we've gone. That should never be a temptation. It should never be a temptation. I tell people, forget about the amount. If we say $1 billion, my answer is the same. $1 million on the floor, my answer is the same. $1 billion on the floor, my answer is the same. It is not a temptation. But that's because we've had to build this conviction. It doesn't matter what you put there. It's not a temptation. Because I tell people, I get tempted, I'm human. But when I left my house in the morning, myself and my wife, we had a discussion on our household budget. And when we were factoring all the variables of income and expenditure and all that, there was no plan for occasional stumbling into $1 million. It was not there. We drew the balance. There was no plan. So when we finished, we agreed that this is how we'll spend our income for the month or for the week or for the year. That was settled. And we're okay with it. We're going to go and drink Gary for the half of the, this thing, or be flexing um, Dominion. This is Dominion Pizza. It was Domino's in Lagos, but it says Dominion in Benin. <laughs> Dominion Pizza. It's all, things always change in Benin. It's not Dominion Pizza. So, whether we're going to be eating Domino's Pizza or is it Cold Stone or ice, Stone Cold, something like that. Hey, ice cream for the rest of the month, we agreed, based on our income. So, me finding $1 million does not change those dynamics. It's not a temptation. But if you tell me, sir, as a doctor, I want to wrongly append the signature and say, this patient has some medical condition when he does not have it. If you do that, if you don't do it, we won't pay your salary for the month. Aha, uh -huh. that's a temptation. Because you are touching something that I planned with. I will still not do it, and God help me, I won't do it. But that's a valid temptation, because you are pressing on my resources. That's something I planned with. But $1 million I didn't plan with, increase with $10 billion. It matters not. And you have to build convictions to that point, where your cardinal principles will revolve around three things. I will not lie, I will not steal, I will not cheat. I wrote a letter to my department when I just came out from the U.S. some years back. Something happened. A top person said something that implied by imputation that something was missing. And it was under my purview. I wrote a letter. And I said, this letter, I'm calling for a convocation of everybody sitting in this department to have a meeting. And if the resolution is not to my satisfaction, I'm going to take it wherever I want to take it. I said, man, I'm a prince of the kingdom. I'm an ordained reverend minister. I will not lie, steal, or cheat, nor allow my name to be dragged in the mud. If you don't resolve it, Eventually, everybody signed and gave me my written letter. I put in the file. We are sorry. That's not what we meant. Because all you really have is your name. All you have is your name. All you have is your name. The Bible says a good name is better than riches. A good name is better than riches. I have not seen anybody name his son those names of those people you cock in town. KBK. Or Anini. There is nothing wrong with the name Anini. According to Benin Lezikon. There is nothing wrong with it. Most of those names have no problem. The owners who first took it have destroyed it. They have destroyed it. On the 1988, when lawyers only need the laws, we call him, and some of them, DSP, Yama, and Co. were being tied to the stake and being executed, the police of inspector, or DSP, Yamu, who gave, supposedly gave them weapons, was sentenced to death. When it was on the stake, as usually say, you know, they showed the broadcast, so we're watching it, and say, okay, what's your last word? 
And he said, well, regret being posted to Benin. Then he sang a song in Benin. I don't want to sing it because I don't want to sing it. He sang a song in Benin that was a popular song in Benin churches. That was the last day it was sung in the Benin church. To date. It was a gospel song. Because he sang it. He sang it. We left the song for him. We left the song for him. We will sing other songs. And that's how the song faded out of church worship uh, liturgy. A good name is always better than riches. A good name is always better than riches. You know, one of the reasons why we have these challenges is because humans have free will. I tell people philosophically, when I argue with my free thinker friends and philosophers, that the reason why evil will always exist is because God gave man free will. The existence of evil, God didn't create free will. Free will is a consequence. Uh, sorry, God didn't create evil. Evil is a consequence. It's a risk that God took by allowing his pinnacle species, his dominant species, to have free will. The fact that I have a right to choose means that I can choose wrong. So the moment you give me a right to choose, that means possibility of evil started. Paul said, I did not know sin until the law was given. The moment the commandment comes and says, the commandment means you can choose to obey or not to obey. So the commandment is always predicated upon free will. The essence of a commandment is proof that free will exists. You don't give animals commandments. They move by instinct. A lion, everyone starts to tell us better, a lion would not go after a prey when it's fully satiated. Once an animal is hungry, it don't do. The only people capable of corruption are humans. I know so I don't fool, but bring down first. I know tomorrow. You know, people don't steal because of present hunger. I hope you know. It's the fear of future hunger. <laughs> so they don't know finish. Well, I know they finish. It's been like bicycle for this country. So man. I know I have money now. Because when you see the kind of humongous amounts people steal in Nigeria, you know they're not stealing for themselves. They're stealing for future generations yet to born. That this may be the last time my family had this opportunity. So let me steal for my great 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 grandson. That's what happens. And only humans are capable of that. Only humans. Only a human being can be fully satiated and choose to still rush for food. Only. A human being can be hungry and choose not to eat. Like when we fast. Only humans are capable of such things. Only humans. Because animals generally move by instincts. They can learn, but generally they move by instincts. So all those species do not require commandments. They have codings. They've already been programmed to act that way. A dog will always respond to the Pavlov's experiment. We call it classical conditioning. You ring a bell, you bring food. You ring a bell, you bring food. You ring a bell, you bring food. After a while, you ring a bell, it salivates whether there's no food or not. You've classically conditioned that animal to respond to innate instincts. But for human beings, we have a spirit. When God wanted to create a man, he said, and let us make him the imago Dei. Let us birth him in our image and likeness, capable of free will and capable of thinking. Job 32, let's read that quickly. There are three friends who came to visit Job. You know the story. Now, after they have done all they can, all they could, Elihu was the youngest. Then made one profound statement. It's very profound for me as a medical doctor because having some background in cognitive neuroscience and behavioral psychology, will think in medical science, and to an extent correct, that what makes the human being different is mammalian brain. You know, we have this forehead, it's critical, it's frontal lobes. Our ability to reason gives us cognition, a higher form of intelligence. And we believe this where decision-making resides. I mean, as a doctor, I can tell you all the neuronal circuits that define my raising of my hand. I can give you uh, like 12 things that have to happen at least, and probably more. I can give one, two, three, four, five, six. That's what I would teach medical students and doctors. Before you do this, this is where the signal comes from, most of this part of the brain, most of this part of the brain, most of this part of the brain, then to spinal cord, and then to particular muscle, and I lift up my hand. I can say that. I can tell you why patients pass so and so when it's paralyzed and all that. So we tend to think from that reductionist philosophy the philosophy of reductionism is that everything that happens grossly can be reduced to, to molecular level. And that's what science is based on. That's why it's postmodern scientific philosophy. But it's not true. Not everything can be rationalized and explained by just explain one molecule hits another molecule and that's what happens. No. The brain is why I can make these intelligent decisions. But doesn't mean that that's where decisions are made. So ultimately, the brain becomes a vehicle for, our for the expression of our will. Our free will does not reside in the brain. If you take away the human brain, you cannot function in free will. That's very true. But that does not mean that's where it exists. That's not mean that's where it exists. Many times you can prove it. 
my wife was asking me some days back, said, when you had that accident, were you in coma? What did you see? I said, I didn't know. I didn't know I was in coma until I woke up. I didn't know. But people have experiences, and I had a near-death experience shortly after birth. Those things just prove that the human body is beyond what we think it is, because there's a spirit resident in it. There's a spirit resident in it. We have because we're asking because we lost a colleague recently, and she was in coma for a long time, and we're just, you know, we're just trying to come to closure. What could have happened, you know, and how was she? Was she suffering? And you know, stuff like that. And that's my wife, because we're very close friends with my wife, my friend too. I just told her, relax. She didn't suffer. I was there. I've been there. I didn't know what's happening. I have no idea. All you have is peace. That's all. All you have is only when you wake up, say, hey, I don't wake up. Oh, God. And I still do here. Gosh. You know. Job 32, verse 8. Let's start from verse 6 quickly. And then he, the son of Barak, the Buzite, <laughs> the bourgeois, answered and said, I like that part, the bourgeois. These are all rich folks, by the way. Well, we'll come to that some other day. Answered and said, I am young and you're very old. Because what is important is that in medicine, we teach that experience is learned. You get wiser by exposure. The reason why children behave the way they behave is because their exposure to environmental stimuli is short. Oh, sorry, small, because their, their stay in this world is short. The longer you live, the more you're bombarded by stimuli, external stimuli, the more your brain develops. For instance, if the eye is not exposed to light, the retina will not develop. Okay? That's how you need external stimuli, stimulation, to constantly challenge the brain to develop. Like our environment now is a constant, our environment is not stimulating, it's oppressing. It's resist being alive. So you need to fight. As you wake up, in, that's a war. To wake up in Nigeria, you have war. Amen. Jesus. <laughs> that's why right. so when people write all manner of things, it's war. Everything, war. I woke up this morning, shame to bad people. <laughs> hey, God Almighty. <laughs> someone, someone wrote on, on, on the status that I finally blocked my village people. There's a setting I have finally blocked. My village. You can't see my status. I have blocked my village people. It's there. Just check it. Block village people. <laughs> anyway, you know the story. Let me just summarize it. And Elihu was saying something. He said, I have thought that when we went to counsel Job, you know, Job's problem was so serious that when they saw him from afar, they first waited for three days. That's a problem. That's the kind of problem you know that the devil is on your case. But that means God is somewhere. Yeah. When fresh bad news makes a previous tragedy look like child's play, you know the devil has, they, they mean you that day. When something you just heard now makes you feel that what you heard before, I said, I'm finished, Mugbe. You know how you say, eh, I've been crying for that one. I don't say, well, I know they finished. We're like bicycle. Bible says, as the servant was speaking, another came and as was another came. And he said, don't cry, Job, yet. There's another one. In 24 hours, Job was reduced to rubble, as it were. But he didn't lose his integrity. Bible says, and in this, God, Job did not sin against God. In this, Job did not sin against God. He was the wealthiest, most powerful man in the East, the Bible says. And one day he lost everything, material, physical. But the one most important thing he didn't lose was his confidence. He didn't lose that. And to tell you that that's what the devil is after. The devil is not merciful. The devil is not merciful. When God gave the devil the opportunity to hit Job, he gave him an opportunity, a carte blanche, a blank check. Hit everything. Don't just touch Job. That's in his life. Touch everything. But when Job was being attacked externally, there was always one servant that was left. When they become so merciful, God said, you can kill all the servants. How come one was spared? Because somebody had to bring the bad news. That was the target. It was not about loss of possessions. So material things don't matter. If you're going through this life thinking that what matters in this life is how much money you got, your life consists in the abundance of the possessions you possess or the things you possess. If you think what matters are the things you own, you're getting it wrong. You're getting it wrong. The devil left one person per episode so that Job would get the bad news and curse God. When Job refused, the devil entered his wife and said, curse God and die. Your soul is always a target. Your soul is always a target. The devil told Jesus in the trance, as I believe, so these are the things people are fasting for and giving sowing tithes and offerings for. He said, I will give you. Of course, it was a lie. But I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. Just give me your soul. And Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt worship only the Lord thy God. Only the Lord thy God. Only the Lord thy God. Only, truthfully, if you believe that your ultimate aim in this life is to have money, 
I can assure you the devil will cooperate with you to ensure that you have money. Yes. Yes. But your soul will be given in exchange. So Jesus Christ said, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And many people are giving their soul, their neighbor's soul, their children's soul, their community's soul. I'm saying they're gathering souls to give. Not only they are, they're all gone a long time ago. They're looking for more souls to give. Just for material things that are fleeting. Hallelujah. Verse 7, let's read from verse 7 first. Start from verse 6 quickly, because this is a core thing. And the son of Barashir, the Bruce answered and said, I am young, and you are very old. You guys have lived longer. You should know better. And you are very old. Wherefore, I was afraid, and does not show you my opinion. I didn't want to speak because I felt that older people are talking. But this is a gerontocratic principle. Older people are wiser. So let's go on. And I said, they should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. Verse 8. Mm. But there is a spirit in man. That was his call. There is a place from which free will comes. There is a place from which knowledge comes. The brain learns by experience. But just said, I found something else. In spite of the fact that you are older, and your brain ought to have spoken what was better, what you uttered was utter rubbish. So I realized there's something different. There is a core. There's an inner core in man. That's why a young child can speak forth wisdom. Because the Holy Spirit can give it to him. And I talked about the diagnosis I made, and when I talked about the diagnosis, of course, the first of its kind in Nigeria. When you say Nigeria, I mean West Africa, in Nigeria. And I told my professor, I said, this is what this child has, I think. He said, I've never seen it. The person who taught me has never seen it. The one who taught that one has never seen it. So, so I think it is. That's why you hear David say, I have more understanding than my teachers. Why? There's a spirit in man. There's a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty give them understanding. Verse 9. Great men. Say that. Great men are not what? It is the old men, even great men, people who have succeeded. It's not everything they say that's wisdom. That's why your reference for truth must come from scriptures. Everything you hear, a dead clock can still show the right time twice a day. So the fact that somebody has not succeeded, what he's saying is rubbish. Even a dead analog clock is correct twice a day. If the clock stopped at 6 o'clock, when it's 6 o'clock, the clock will be correct. When it's 6 o'clock in the evening again, the clock will be correct. Dead, but still giving truth. Hallelujah. Neither do the aged understand judgment. Verse 10. Therefore I said, hark to me also. I will show you my opinion. It's important to realize that if free will resides in the spirit man, then that's what we should protect. Let's go to Galatians 5, verse 16. Galatians 5, 16. And I'll start to tell you to the end now. I want to show you something quickly. Galatians 5, 16. You can just read from the projector. It says, walk ye in the spirit then, and ye shall not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Paul tried to dichotomize free will, compartmentalize it into what we want to do versus what our instincts, our inclinations want us to do that are contrived to our moral compass. So Paul says, this is a struggle we all face. But says, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. For the flesh, now this is the immortal combat, the flesh is always contesting with the spirit. There's always this conflict between what I want to do and what I shouldn't do. Now, why is it about those who do not what they want to do, but what they should do? But the flesh lost it against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. This contention will always continue. And there's a contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So your free will is inclined in a certain direction, but because there is a temptation, Paul called it the flesh. Some other person goes on that terminology. But the point is, with your heart, you're oriented in one direction, but there's something that always drags you. And that's where this demon position came from. Because it's not properly resolved. People think that there's something wrong with me. People tell me in a clink, I have my own water. Doctor, I have my own water. <laughs> Where do you get my own water from? I don't know if my own water exists. I have my own water. The things I do, even me, shock me. And after that, he choked me. <laughs> Why? But then he's not explaining. I'm almost present to believe that. You have my water. <laughs> you know, some problems with us here that, ah, oh, God Almighty, only you, only you, only you. There's someone who told me, Clank, oh, God Almighty, in the emergency room, 
mother was dying, said, Doctor, I'm the only one left. My mother was soon die. I said, Why? I said, Doctor, I don't understand my family. They are strong people. The last day I was abroad, they called me back. I said, How? I said, You won't understand. If you're a doctor, you won't understand. They called me back. I entered a plane, I came back. I don't know why I entered. They called me back. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know some of you believe that, but I don't believe this crap. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. But we'll come to one point. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot control the human without his consent. There's a point you caved. You cannot. You cannot. The human is the most powerful being in this cosmic realm. See, let me just say this. You cannot be bewitched. You cannot give a child a winch to chop. Say a chop winch. That's junk. You cannot be secretly injured to a cult. Say, I don't know. It's when I ate the food in that party. At night, they calling me, oh, 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 oh. See, all those things that does, they are not the wood flakes. You cannot be, see, I know what I'm talking about. You cannot be registered without your consent. There's a moral law that governs this universe. Both God and the devil follow that principle. Because God created it. You cannot impose anything on a human created. You cannot. Matter of fact, in God's kingdom is so serious that ignorance is an excuse. You do something wrong that is declared to be wrong according to scriptures, but you did not know it was wrong. It is so serious because your free will was not involved. God said, excuse him. He did not know. That's how serious it is. People don't know what free will means. It will not be counted against the person. I said, just Christ. On the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. Why? They don't know what they are doing. They don't know what they are doing. But for the Pharisees, <laughs> you are sons of hell. You do not know what they do. You do not know. In God's kingdom, ignorance and excuse. So the Bible says, in the days of ignorance, God did what? He overlooked. But now he calls men everywhere to do what? To repent. So it is not wrong to be wrong. It's only wrong to remain wrong after receiving knowledge of the right. Uh-huh. All right, let's go on. Quickly, quickly, I need to round off. Quickly. That's familiar spirit again. All right. Judge. You know this you know. Galatians 5 verse 10. I want to say something quickly. Sorry, I'm overheating that their cable. Quickly, Galatians 5 16. Let's do that quickly. You have it, you have it there? All right, good. You know, we've discussed it several in the academy. So I know you can read offhand, but let's read from the Bible. <laughs> George. George is a walking Bible. <laughs> I'm telling you. All right. This I say then, mm-hmm. walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm-hmm. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, uh, yeah. and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Mm-hmm. All right, go on, go on. Go on. I'll but tell you if you be led of the spirit, you are not, you under, are not the law. under You're not the law. subject to that commandment. You're not. Once you're led by the spirit, oh, continue, George, please. I'll tell you to stop. Right, Once you're led by the spirit, you have elevated above yourself above the presence, the jurisdiction of the law. Go on. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Now this is what we haven't talked about the last, I think the first time we spoke about Carter of Romans series. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery. These are adultery, fornication, okay. uncleanness, okay. lasciviousness, okay. idolatry, okay. witchcraft, All right. hatred, variance, okay. emulations, okay. wrath, strife, seditions, And heresies. all of them. All right, go on. Envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, <laughs> See, hey, hey. and such like. Drunkenness inside, though. Don't all these science students, they say, look, it's there. Drunkenness. Clubbing. Not clubbing, but say revelling. There's some white parties. It's inside there. It's inside there. I saw it. Uh-huh. I saw it. Go on. Of the which I tell you of before. Of which I told you before, as I've told you in time I've past. I've also told you in time past. That they will do such, do such things, such things shall, not. shall not inherit the so kingdom of God. So it's not saying that any person who has committed these things will not. See, you have to understand how scripture is written. Scripture does not mean one-off. It means that if you persist in doing those things, you decide that this is how you want to live your life, you will no way get there. No way. Not about the person who struggle with it. This is your trajectory. You have decided that this is how I want to live your life. My father, some people Paul told, said, let's pray for these two brethren who have decided to remain fornicators, that the devil should kill them. Paul raised that prayer point in church. They will kill them. So their souls can be saved. Now that they're not doing it now, kill them. 
So if you decide to persist in such things, the Bible says you will not. Not you may not. You will not. Go on. But the fruits of the Spirit oh, is love. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Love. Joy. Uh -huh. Peace. Long, long suffering. suffering. Gentleness. Hey, hold on. Long suffering. You need that. Pray in times like this. Some people need to suffer long with them. The matter to the heart. Long suffering. There's a person who have stopped talking to their friends. Two years now. Right. Come on, ladies. Say, I'm keeping her in covenant. <laughs> You're destroying yourself. That dirt in your heart is eating into your heart. It's eroding into your heart. The cancer of the heart. To keep malice, it's bad to forgive the person. Like I told you, I said, I have chosen to forgive and forget you. <laughs> no, I have chosen to forgive and forget you. It's better for me. Hallelujah. Paul said, here do I exercise myself. It's a choice. It's a training. To have a conscience void of offense towards God and towards all men. To say that I have no grudge against anybody, living or dead. Something you need to walk towards. Because it take you out of the pathway of salvation. Go on. Gentleness. Mm, goodness. Goodness. Mm. Faith. Meekness. You know, here yeah, we just bear these names. Goodness. Temperance. Faith. No, we just bear the names. It's not by bearing the names, so. I didn't mention faith. I'm just saying that it's here in scriptures. Faith. Temperance. Faith. Against such, there, there is, is no, no law. law. And they that are Christ have crucified, crucified the, flesh the flesh with affections and lust. Let's go to Romans 7, verse 14. This is one of our popular chapters in academy. Romans 14, verse 20, 25. Romans 7, verse 14, sorry. Romans 7, verse 14. It's one of our popular discussions in the academy. Oh, For we know mm -hmm. that the law is spiritual. We know the law is spiritual. That means it originated from God, okay? And it's appropriate for man's spirit. That's the target. Go on. But I am carnal, mm -hmm. sold on Wait, wait, wait. So I don't get it wrong. The people who interpreted that did not interpret carnality to mean sinful. What it meant is that I am fleshy, I am human. So the law came from God. It has a spiritual core. But I am human. I have experiences. I have temptations. Why I like Paul was his level of pragmatism. Paul's not, see, I keep telling people that if Paul was in our day, he likely would not join some Pentecostal churches. Because we overtly spiritualize everything. Paul was more of a philosopher, more of an intellectual. Paul believed in rationalizations. He believed in cogitations. He believed in engaging you on the basis of reason. That's why only he could contend with the philosophers. Peter did not have such time for such human beings who want me to philosophically prove that God exists. Peter had no such time. So God said, Peter, to the Jews. Even when God told Peter to reach out to the Gentiles, Peter was rejecting God. God said, I will, look at me, this is my ID card, I'm God. Arise and eat this food. Peter said, no, you can't, I can't eat that which is unclean. <laughs> God, oh, come here. I was the one who said it was unclean before. I'm the one telling you, he said, no, get it behind me, God. I cannot eat <laughs> and that which is unclean. God said, okay. What I was trying to tell you is that if, uh, if you were able to eat that which is unclean, then you will understand the message I'm trying to pass across to you, that you should go and preach to the Gentiles. Since you will not understand, there are people waiting for you downstairs. I have told Gabriel to go and meet Cornelius to send them to you. That's another thing. As powerful as Gabriel was, he could not preach the gospel to Cornelius. That's an angel that boasts. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. After all that braggadocio, verbose introduction, he said, send for Peter. He shall tell you words by which thou and thine household shall be saved. We understand what it means to be a human being. That's an angel, a cherub. Then go and send for Peter. So God arranged everything. He went to meet Peter and sent Gabriel to Cornelius. And now Peter follows, okay, all right, that's what God said. Followed him to Cornelius. Peter is preaching. God tells the Holy Spirit, or sends the Holy Spirit, this guy will not wait to lay hands on them. Move. So the Bible says the Holy Spirit didn't come on them. He did what? Fell on them. As soon as they started speaking in tongues, Peter stopped the message. Say, so, okay, why are they preaching? Why are they speaking in tongues? He was one preaching, you know? why are they speaking in tongues? That's to tell you that human beings, as powerful and really anointed as they are, Pastor keeps saying these things, the best of men are still men. Are still men. Who are still human. And the more you realize that, the more you create boundaries for yourself. I told someone said, our principles are the boundaries within which we live free. You can only live free within a boundary created by your principles. That's the only time you can be free. Otherwise, you become enslaved to your lusts and temptations. This flesh can make you a prisoner. Why? Free will. Your ability to choose what is right or wrong can become a paradox for you. Can become the very reason 
why you are addicted. The very reason why you are trapped. Go on, sorry. For that which I do, mm. I allow not. If for that, that, wait, wait a second. No, don't, don't be rushing these things. For that which I do, mm -hmm. I allow not. Okay, I think this guy's a backup. George, but just continue. I like that one saying. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I for would, what I would. That I do not. For what I hate, but what I hate. You can see I that do. conflict. I don't want to do that, but I find myself doing it. This is product of free will. That's not what I want to do. I don't want to smoke. I don't want to smoke. I don't want to get drunk. But I find myself doing it again and again and again. I didn't want to go to that guy's house. But something was leading, was calling me. My life was, was, was calling me, was calling me. I said, this is why I say I have my own water spray. Because <laughs> people do not understand. So Paul dichotomized it. And went on saying, go on, let's see, what, let's see Paul's challenge. Or oh, he's explained the dilemma of the human. Go on, verse 16. If then I do that, I think they're working. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto that. The law is good. So the problem is not the commandment in itself, in and of itself. The problem is not what is right. It is I. Go on, verse 17. For I know that in me, no, now then is no more I that do it, but sin that do it. So for Paul, Paul said this is Paul. There is an inclination in me to violate the law. See, let me tell you, that thing, that makes you do what is wrong is from God. But that's not what God is telling you for. See, if God wanted all of us to keep doing what is right only, it would be done. All into this to seal us. And that time will come. There's a time of salvation. A time will come when we are sealed. That's the glorification phase. At that stage, it will be impossible to sin. That time we would have lost free will. Because we have become finally in the evolution, we have become consummated as God. That will happen with resurrection money. We will become like Him. We will neither marry. <laughs> now I'm joined. Yes, so we will not marry. <laughs> George, if I marry quick, they said we will not marry. <laughs> Osayande, marry quick. They said we will not marry. <laughs> My wife was talking to me last week. She said that's part she's not like. So you mean to just go, we'll just see ourselves in heaven. He said, will I recognize you? I said, of course you recognize me. So we're not going to be married. I said, <laughs> he said, that was not us. That part, we should review that part of scripture. I said, how oh, these two were married, married at, in, on earth? And these two were, were married. I said, well, we're not married. <laughs> so anything you want to do for me, do it now. <laughs> Don't wait till that kid will come. Buy me the gift now. <laughs> you know, the point is that we'll not get married there. We'll have become like God, like the angels, as it were. Sealed. The point is, the reason why we can sin is because we have free will. And it's our ability to rebel. They say, why do you think a child, tell a child, don't do this? Say, hey, okay. I should not, mommy, I should not touch this thing there. That's it. <laughs> That's it. You wonder what is wrong with this child? A child is human. It's expressing its autonomy, its independence. So why is you are disciplining that child, do not kill that spirit. Or that you turn him or her to a moron. And there are many persons who have been turned to morons in Africa. You know the consequence of that? No creativity. Everybody's now an automaton. It's now a clone. The Western world, in pursuing freedom of human will, knew that they would come to this point where people want to now start pursuing, I can marry this guy. It's a price they have paid so that they can go to space. It's the same liberation of the human spirit that brings about inventions. A lot of people think that, why should a man always marry a woman? Get that? That's, it's stunning, right? But is that ability to question what is conventional dogma that still took people to space? So those who use it wisely will end up in space. Those who don't use it wisely, they will end dragged. But God won't take it away because we need it now. So it's for you to channel their choices. No, so don't say, oh, I did it again. I smoked again. That means I'm finished. No, it means that you are human. That means if I could choose to do wrong, I can tr train myself to do what is right without killing what is human. If I could do wrong, then I can train myself to do what is right. Because that temptation will continue. But I need it. If I didn't need it, God will not keep it there. I need my free will. It's what makes me human. My ability to say no means I can say yes. My ability to say no means I can say yes. The counterfeit proves that the genuine exists, right? Yeah.
So it says, now then is no more that I do it, but sin adultery made. So I have an inclination. Go to verse 18. For I know that in me, that's my flesh, do I no good sin. This inclination will not make me do right. But to will to present is me. It's with me. I want to do that which is right. Heaven knows. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. And then Paul says, I'm frustrated. For the good that I would do, not. But the evil which I would do, not, that I do. The good that I would, I don't do. The other I want to do is wrong, that's what I do. Now, if I do that which is not the same thing, go on to verse 21. I find then a law. Paul said there's a principle that's at work in me. So every human has this problem. There's always going to be in temptation to do that which is wrong. I will do good, but evil is praying with me. Verse 22. Hmm. For I delight in the law of God. My inward compass is oriented towards God. See, there is no human being that doesn't have a moral compass. That's where the conscience comes in. That's why I find that across the world, it's what we call comparative anthropology. Every civilization evolves laws that prevent people from doing evil and reward those who do good. It incentivizes good and punishes evil. Independent of each other. There's no civilization that allows people to steal. None. None. All the codifications we call laws or legal codifications are born out of an inward impetus. There's an impetus inner. It's called the conscience. Unfortunately, by regular engagement, your conscience can become seared. Like some people, they have killed their conscience. In Nigeria, I have met people who don't have conscience. I'm telling you, many of them end up being governors, unfortunately. Oh, I'm not, I'm not joking. Those people you talk about, I meet a lot of them claims. When I talk with them, I realize that no, there's no hope really, unless they choose to change. And that's difficult. They have gone, they've hardened their conscience. And when you keep putting those status updates, like I told somebody, they say the way you are going, you don't end up like those politicians. You lie for free. You are our class rep. You are seeing us koro koro. Photocopying is 10 naira. You tell us we pay 15 naira per page. Are you not worse than the people who are, those who are still more, they don't see us at least so they can, you are seeing, there's me and you, class rep, me and you. You know that, you know how straight it is. You know it's 10 naira. And you know that I know that it's 10 naira. You know how I, that's your own weakness, you don't have a great fall. So you are going to be worse so. And you end up being a governor. The way this country is, you, you, we end up being a governor. Oh, you guys don't have those experiences in school? You've not seen class reps? Oh, God. I don't want to make heaven. I know. It's a desire that needs to be trained in the right direction. Because the more you do those things, the more right and wrong becomes blurred in your eyes. It becomes blurred in your eyes. That's what you call the normalization of abomination by steel. That the, that's what the media does. So now that you're to children, that it's not, always, it's not only men and married women. So cartoons have it now. Go to your WhatsApp groups. When you see, when you click on emojis for family, you see all the man of, so, right? Because you are being oriented. So the next generation, the way I react to those things, not the way my parents react to it. Now I just, our children will not react that way. They say, because oh. their classmates, some of them will say, ah, daddy, James, his parents are John, Adam, and then Steve. Or oh, that other one, parents are Eve and Evie. The normalization of abomination by Steve. It's gradual. So people's conscience are being hardened. They're being coerced. Hallelujah. But I delight in the law of God after the inward man, verse 23. Let's bring it to a conclusion. But I see another law of my members. Go to verse 24. Oh, wretched man. This is where almost everybody gets to who's struggling with sin. Oh, wretched man that I am. But you see, this is not the way to go. Paul said, I'm conflicted. I'm tired. I want to stop lying. As I said, I want to stop lying. My new resolution, January 2nd, I, I told the highest number of lies I've ever told. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It doesn't work. As you left that place, lie. <laughs> lie. Even when they ask you your name, lie. You know, hallelujah. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Let me just round this off now. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Let's see how Paul resolved this issue. There's one way. There's therefore now no condemnation which I, to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now he was explaining what it means to be in Christ Jesus. People who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Verse 2 quickly. Sorry, this is theological class. Verse 2 quickly. For the law of the spirit of, of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3. For what the law could not do, and that is weak through the flesh, God sent his own son. Verse 4, let's go on. That the right of the law might prove that. Okay, go on. Verse 5. For they that are after, that's the point. They that are after the flesh, 
do mind the things of the flesh. The more you focus on things which cause fleshly gratification alone, this is how you will embolden that instinct in you that keeps lusting against the spirit. This is the immortal combat. There are two things at war in you. You don't want to keep fornicating, but you keep watching porn. You don't want, you don't want to smoke, but you're always found in clubs. You don't want, you see the leak? You don't want to steal, but all the persons in your WhatsApp group, they're enabling people who steal. How? They condemn politicians, but they don't mind you picking one tenth K, you fell on the floor. You don't want to end up poor. Ah, this is not good, though. What I want to say now, it's not good. I want to ruffle some. Uh, let me ch- shake this table some more. You don't want to end up poor. But whenever it's your birthday, status object is always, this is my account number. This is my account number. It's not my happy birthday. It's my guide of my mouth, though. A guy, do something, though. You're creating an entitlement mindset. I don't mind doing it in your circle of friends. Your friends should know what to do. But it's coming an enterprise. I hope you know. It's the latest hustle in town. My birthday is 10 days away. <laughs> I'm receiving gifts already. Account balance. Create a lot. What you're doing is to tell people that if you don't send me anything, you're not my friends. And you are training your mind that way. That those who could not send you money don't really wish you well. And all those who sent you money, I've checked out. Most of those who sent money are guys to girls. They want something. And you're saying, it doesn't matter how stupid. The country has had that. Someone just buy you iPhone 12, as this country is now. It's not your father. He just buy you iPhone 12. He doesn't, no, he's just my friend. You're a fool. A fool. A fool. And that which I recompense. A fool. A fool. He just buy you iPhone 12. As is, even my father. <laughs> even my father. My father buys me iPhone 12. It's too much, sir. Buy me for 12. Oh, God Almighty. My father will just buy me for God it is now. You know, even within couples, <laughs> I bought a car for my wife recently. It's her car, actually. She has no head word. Every time I say, you know, I bought you a car so that you. You know, I bought you a car. You know, that's within couples. That's supposed to be, it's supposed to be normal. <laughs> but, man. And I said, you know, I bought it a car. So I said, all my sister forgiving me, you know. I said, okay, yes, I didn't. Oh, I should have said this nicely, but you know, I bought you a car, you know. That should be an eternal proof. And that's a men's thing. It doesn't matter for women. Buy a high car is just one. If after three months I don't do something else, I'll fail again. You know, so. You know, everyone has taught us, this is buying one million dollars, two million dollars, break it down. <laughs> be sharing it. You will learn. Married men, you will learn. We will learn. Because woman is the affection that matters. Right? You buy one billionaire thing, you buy two billionaire things, one. You know, you cannot want to prosper and be training, rehearsing for poverty. You cannot want to prosper and be rehearsing for poverty. So believing that people would, or try as a lady, because I believe, and I run over this, it's not asymmetrical. We are training our women to be dependent. We are eroding the gains our mothers made. We're training women that the only way you can prosper in life is if you have a guy who gives you something. So I keep asking my wife, where did the guys get it? I would go out with colleagues. We are earning the same thing. It is ingrained in the lady that I should pay. And I keep asking, I have seen my pay slip. There's no testosterone allowance. So, and I have read the constitution. There's no way it's section one versus one. And the guy shall pay for ladies' transport fare whenever they be found in the same bus. I have not read it. But it has been imposed upon me. So you know what it makes? It makes some of us crooked, but the wise ones will work harder. So we'll always be better than the ladies. We'll always be better. Because external condition has imposed upon us a responsibility. They want to take care of society. So ladies, it doesn't matter whether they have master or PhD. It doesn't matter. So I just told them that as a woman, all you need to do is to marry, give it to children, and take care of the family front. It's a lie. You can do everything. It's a lie. And if you ask of grace, I hope you know that now. It's a lie. And I was talking to somebody who said, ah, I, may, I, I did my reception in one um, place. Um, and it's, it's owned by one pastor's wife. I said, it's, no, it's both that own it. I don't know about the man, but it's the woman that owns it, I know. I said, ah. <laughs> so I said, it's, ah. Remember, Mrs. said, hey, she your own own seat. She's a CEO. I said, well, I know better. I know say, no, say, no, she's a woman that owns it. Just by just assisting her, she owns it. 
<laughs> she will give me. My pastor talking about her. I said, no, the woman, she took me through the process. She, she talked like the CEO. The other just came one time and said, but the woman is one that knows the business. She's one that owns it. She said, so good. Yeah, she's right. That's right. Actually. And that's a model for women. My mother took a vow. The more ladies in their family, that all of them, well, women, will be the house in their husband's house. Yes, and all of them did it. There are eight ladies, all of them built a house. My father said, You don't, you don't, it, you put together your children, it doesn't matter. My mother said, You don't understand. It's a vow we took. So my father became the project manager. It, it was so bad. My mother said, She must do it. My father took her. My mother said, Look, you have that, we want to be the dust of your land. I will buy land from you. <laughs> I said, Oh, give me, which kind of woman be this? My mom bought the land from my father, paid my father the money, made him the project manager of the house. I have not gone to the house now. My father has not gone there. She owns the house. She said, okay. She has satisfied herself that she built a house in her husband's house. With her husband's knowledge, he supervised the project to tell herself that she didn't marry for sustainers. 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 You need to train yourself. You need to, and of course, when you see my sister, she's the last born. I had to take permission from her. Now she's married, of course. But I had to permission from her then to give her money. I said, sister, you're in school. I'm a doctor. I want to send you money. She's like, oh, I don't have needs. I paint. I sell my artwork. I say, hey, but I'm your latest your your brother. <laughs> it's, okay. I said, for my pride's sake, let, I, let me be that like I gave you money. It's okay, okay, because of that. Okay, uh, let me send 20K. No, 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 that's too much. I'll send 10K. Hey, God, my sister. She can't woman me this. My mother, her mother's daughter. My wife is like that. Hallelujah. You need to train yourself and train your mind. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, or they that after the spirit the things of the spirit. Verse 6 quickly, quickly. For to be kindly minded means to be estranged from God. If you fixate on fleshy gratifications, you will soon become separated from God's spirit. But to be spiritually minded, it's life. And just Christ said, the words I speak unto you are spread on life. If you truly want to live above the flesh, you need to meditate upon the word of God. That's what will groom your spirit. Watch the news less often, but if you must watch the news, do. But watch it through the lens of the spirit. What you have gleaned from God's word. I do not define my moral compass according to what Hollywood says, or Nollywood, or what newspapers, or what books. I interpret what they say based on what I know from the, God's word. I don't interpret God's word from what I've learned from life. No. I'm a doctor. I'm a scientist. I'm proud to be a scientist. But the truth I know is from God's word. It supersedes every medical fact that I know. Every. Every. Fact is about the reality in the now. Truth is about conclusion. The Bible says Abraham, <laughs> Abraham did not, did not, did not, Reckon the deadness of his mother, wife's womb. So he knew it was a medical fact. Sarah's womb was dead. Faith does not call those things which be as though they be not. Mm -mm. Do you have a headache? Yes, I have a headache. Does that mean you're going to be sick? No. <laughs> Faith is the conclusion of the matter. It's the conclusion of the matter. What is that means is I have cancer. Are you going to die? No. Faith is not a denial of facts. It's a refusal of facts, the right to determine the trajectory of my life. The conclusion of the matter is what the truth is about. So when the Bible says, judge not, I know be judged. Don't say judge, that means don't say it was right or wrong. They say no. Don't say because the person did wrong, he's condemned. When the Bible says judgment, it's talking about condemnation. Don't condemn someone and say, okay, you will end up in hell because of what you did. No. What you did is wrong, but you can live free. What you did is wrong, but you can live free. Who are those that condemn you? They are no more. Neither do I condemn thee. Go. This sin you did is a sin. And sin what? No more. No more. Condemn the sin, excuse the sinner. That's what we do. First Corinthians 2. He that is spiritual judged all things, yet he himself is judged of no other. Verse 15. We have the mind of Christ. And that's how we live. We have the mind of Christ. So when we see things out there, brethren, we do not conclude our life based on what is happening out there. So do this, have to, this is the only way to make money in town now. No. There are better ways. I told somebody that day, I talked to some friends who press things. Some guy that press things. I told them, Flutter Wave was established by a Nigerian. I hope you know, Flutter Wave. I think Paystack was established by a Nigerian too, right? Yes, some Bangkok students. Like, with all your presses, do you know how much knowledge you have? 
how much experience you have. You can create a pay portal. You can employ thousands of people. So you guys have a skill. But society has taught you that this is the only way to use it. You are being lazy. Stretch your mind. Expand your coast. Don't think about money. At the age of 18, Mark Zuckerberg had an offer from Big Gates to buy Facebook for $1 billion. At the age of 18. Today, Facebook is worth hundreds of billions. And he himself is worth almost $100 billion. Facebook, Mark Big Gates owns 2%, or actually 1.7% of Facebook. That's the best he could get. But at 18, Zuckerberg could have been a billionaire. But it's thought more than money. It's thought more than political This is a principle that works for both Christians and non-Christians. If you visit on money, you will fall short. Think about something bigger than money. My wife told me about somebody, somebody, somebody you pronounce says bought a rosary and I said, oh, what a fool. I'm sure you know a person say bought a rosary and I said, what a fool. People do that at the end of their career. Because you can't ride a Rolls Royce. There's no pleasure in riding a Rolls Royce. The pleasure is to sit at the back. It's Ferraris you ride. Lamborghinis. Ride a Rolls Royce, I'm coming to the end. So father should buy a Rolls Royce. Why should I buy a Rolls Royce? Even if I have the money. I'm just thinking it's now in reverse. You don't know what to do with money. But people own that company. Why didn't you hear Dango to to buy a Rolls Royce for himself? If you hear Dango bought a Rolls Royce, you know he bought the company. <laughs> there are different ways of thinking. Stop rehearsing poverty. It doesn't fit you. God bless you all. Grace isn't just a prayer you chant before taking a meal. It's the way we live. The Lord came to show me how crooked I am, but Grace came to straighten me out. Hello, I'm Ostas of Barry Siagon, the senior pastor of House of Grace Benin and I am of Church of God Mission. Here, we liberate people from the bondage of religion through the gospel of grace that we teach, encouraging them to be all that God has called them to be. House of Grace is a dynamic worship center where lives are transformed in an atmosphere of love, friendship, and humility. We have seen troubled marriages restored. We have seen miracle babies to couples who are waiting on the Lord for children, birth of new businesses, and an undying passion to reach out to the unsaved for Jesus Christ. Come fellowship with us today and let Jesus make a difference in your life. Thank you.